Hello everyone, I'm Forecaster Jaxel, and here to discuss the severe weather outlook for uh, one Monday, uh, May 20th, 2019. There's going to be a major severe weather outbreak across parts of uh, Oklahoma and Texas. An exceptionally deep upper level trough here spinning over the desert southwest is going to be interacting with uh, some very uh, robust uh, tropical moisture moving north and west out of the Gulf of Mexico. So this is a pretty classic combination of ingredients here in the plains for severe weather. Um, this uh, video is going to focus really on the forecast. Uh, if you're looking for preparedness tips and actions you can take today uh, to keep your family uh, and yourself safe from the storms. Uh, please refer to your local National Weather Service offices. They have uh, the, all the resources to help you out with that. And please take a few moments this morning uh, before the thunderstorms are on your doorstep to think about what you're going to do in the event that a strong, uh, potentially destructive storm is headed your way. Uh, with that in mind, uh, let's talk a little bit more about the forecast. Uh, so uh, this is a current radar composite, uh, current as of 10.30ish uh, um, on uh, Central Time. Uh, we have this thunderstorm activity that's sort of ongoing across northern parts of the Texas Panhandle, northern parts of Oklahoma. This is all north of a warm frontal boundary, which means it's elevated. It's sort of based off uh, well up into the atmosphere. Um, these storms have produced some damaging wind, some uh, hail, uh, no tornado threat really with these storms uh, because they're sort of elevated uh, above the low-level colder air. Uh, these are not the storms that we're worried about for this afternoon. The storms we are worried about for this afternoon have yet to develop. They will do so in two areas, one sort of here in uh, western Texas uh, along the dry line and then one is going to be another area is going to be farther over here uh, just in the warm sector uh, out in the open due to a strong warm air advection which is going to get the sort of air rising and moving upwards. Um, so uh, this is sort of the current setup and then what we're looking for we'll be watching this area in the west Texas uh, west Texas panhandle uh, and then this area down in uh, the Red River Valley. Uh, that's, those are our areas of future storm development and again the storms that we're most worried about have not yet formed as of 1030. So if you're being impacted by these storms and you see them moving away, do not let your guard down. There's still plenty more yet to come. This is our visible satellite imagery. You can see uh, this is a focus a little bit more to the south and east. Uh, lots of low-level moisture you can see here moving north and west out of the Gulf of Mexico. These little cumulus clouds racing off uh, towards uh, Oklahoma. That's the moisture. You can see these upper-level clouds, the uh, sort of feathery cirrus, um, moving rapidly uh, out of the west-southwest. So we have this uh, change in wind speed and direction with height, uh, both strengthening and veering around to the west. That's our rotational wind shear um, that we're getting, and that's going to help um, put these storms uh, into a rotating uh, motion. Um, and the rotating updrafts of these storms uh, are what's going to be the threat really for the tornadoes. That's how you get a tornado. You need the rotating updraft first. And to get the rotating updraft, again, you need the wind shear. And unfortunately, we have plenty of wind shear. Uh, so again, we'll be watching this area here. You can see already some cumulus clouds starting to bubble up a little bit uh, and then this area over here for future storm development. Uh, this is a uh, this is a, 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 a an animation here of HD radar imagery. Um, out of Altus Air Force Base a little bit earlier. Um, the uh, interesting things to note here, these little boundaries, you can see little um, uh, areas of slightly different radar returns. This is all sort of ground clutter, so the radar is picking up on bugs and dust and pollen and all sorts of that stuff. Um, but where you see these little boundaries, uh, those are, are little areas of, of uh, sort of energy boosts, uh, if you will, for the storm. These uh, boundaries are, you, you can imagine, a sort of turbulently um, you know, rotating uh, little parcels of air like a little column of air, but it's sort of horizontally oriented, parallel to the ground, and they're sort of rotating. And then if you get a thunderstorm's updraft to come along and sort of pick one end up, then you can sort of get that vertical rotation, and that's how you end up uh, forming a tornado. And then, of course, there are more complicated processes, not all of which we fully understand, but the long and the short of it is these boundaries are uh, really the areas to watch for, uh, for uh, potential tornadoes later on. So uh, keep looking out for these boundaries. If you see them intersecting with uh, the storms later on, uh, this afternoon and evening, uh, you'll know that a tornado threat is, uh, is definitely ramping up. Here's our wind direction observations. Again, this is from 10 a.m. Uh, Central Time. We have the east southeasterly winds. That's bringing in the uh, Gulf of Mexico moisture. Uh, up to the north, there are uh, easterly winds and then northeasterly winds. Again, that's north of the warm front. Uh, and this is, again, the, sort of the cooler air. Um, and we'll also be watching that warm frontal boundary for uh, enhanced thunderstorm activity. So it's really this whole area that's at risk for some pretty uh, major severe thunderstorms. Uh, the dew points, uh, this is sort of a measure of moisture. Uh, lots of moisture around. Again, not as much north of 
the warm front. Um, but the dew points, anytime you see them getting above uh, 60, you're really favorable for severe weather. Uh, and again, that covers our entire risk area here. Uh, and then uh, above 70 is, is uh, excessive moisture. Um, so way more than you need to get severe weather. Uh, on to some of our, uh, you know, higher resolution uh, modeling uh, imagery here. Uh, this is the HRRR. Of course, the HRRR is uh, not an infallible model, uh, but it does give us a sort of general idea of what we might uh, like to expect um, in the next few hours. So uh, here we are. This is 2 o'clock. This is a sort of measure of the favorability of the environment for tornadoes. Uh, and you can see that the environment becomes dramatically more favorable for tornadoes as we move from, uh, this is 1 o'clock central time, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, as you move into the evening, you can see these values really, really ramping up here, uh, especially across parts of uh, Oklahoma and northern Texas. Uh, so this is, again, a very favorable environment. This is a sort of equivalent measure for supercells, and so you can see, again, we have an environment very conducive for supercells um, throughout the day, but especially as we move into the evening, and especially in southern parts of Oklahoma. So with that in mind, what does the uh, model think the radar might look like? Um, again, take this with several grains of salt. The model's not going to be able to predict where a thunderstorm is going to go hours ahead of time. So if you see one hitting your house on this map, uh, it does not mean that you are particularly more at risk than uh, your neighbors a few miles or a few dozen miles down the road. Um, so you can see we remain mainly quiet until about uh, 1 o'clock central time, that's 2 o'clock eastern time. Uh, then we sort of get our storm development uh, probably first here in the in the, uh, the eastern, more, the more eastern area uh, that I outlined uh, before. And then uh, later, uh, we'll be watching for the uh, West Texas uh, storms to get going. Uh, these storms will be uh, primarily supercells. You can see the sort of model is trying to figure out that these are supercells it's not quite at a high enough resolution to be able to fully grasp that, but uh, it can uh, give it a shot, and then uh, the storms will be moving off to the east as we move later into the evening. Uh, several rounds of storms are likely for uh, this part of southwestern Oklahoma. So you can see uh, this is after the main, uh, the supercells, and then we get an overnight squall line with more damaging winds, uh, potential tornadoes associated with this as well. So even if one storm is moved off to your uh, east and you are you know left uh, hopefully undamaged by it, uh, don't let your guard down. There are more storms on the way uh, all the way until uh, the wee hours of tomorrow morning. Uh, so I'll leave you um, with, uh, this is just a measure of uh, our rotational energy again, uh, lots of it around, um, but I'll leave you with this, which is our new tool that we added here to the weathermodels.com lab. Uh, this is a 15 minute um, simulation, a radar uh, simulation from the HRRR model, which gives you, a, you know, an even more detailed look um, at uh, how the storms might evolve. And again, don't take this too literally, but it's a good general guideline. You can see the uh, supercells um, moving off to the north and east, and then that secondary squall line developing uh, later into tonight. So I'll uh, be covering the storm, uh, all the storms here for weather.us on our Twitter account at weather.us and on my personal account at Jack Sillen. Uh, so follow us there for more uh, up-to-date information. Uh, and uh, again, be sure to take some time now this morning before the thunderstorms arrive to think uh, and be prepared uh, for what you're going to do in case a storm uh, that is particularly dangerous is headed your way. Uh, stay safe if you are in these areas today, um, and uh, thanks for watching.